Hello guys, my name's Ben O'Keefe and I'm an advanced SOC engineer based in the UK and Ireland. Uh, today, I just wanted to give you a demo of some of the stuff I've been working on with uh, ECAT and malware, uh, specifically in regards to injecting genuine Windows executables with malicious content, that ability to hook into these executables. The uh, user executes these not knowing that a malicious bit of code is running in the background. To start off, I'm just going to run through a presentation and then I'm going to dive into a demonstration. The presentation is going to set the scene really, give an overview of what tools I've been using, the scenario I've laid out, and what other factors may come into play, just to expand on each one of these tools and what, how I come across this. So the tools I have been using is a tool I recently discovered is something called Shouter. And this is used for injecting malicious code shells or callbacks into genuine Windows program executable files. Very powerful tool and very easy to use. This is the main tool I use for injecting executables. I then use Metasploit uh, using certain payloads to allow that reverse TCP binding connection. So this is kind of like a backdoor, something that's listening for that malware callback. So this will sit in the background and await for a callback or a connection from a malicious executable that's been inject injected and then allow me to have full control of the user's machine. Once I have full control of the user's machine, I'm going to show you some keylogger commands, uh, some shell commands and the ability to start downloading files from the machine. The antivirus I've used to run in the background and to check that antivirus doesn't actually pick this up once you start to inject certain Windows executables, is, a, is an antivirus method called Clam AV, or it's free. But the scenario is set up within, with VMs. We use Kali and Windows, and of course VMware tools just to allow either dragging and dropping. This is a setup. So I've got an ECAP server running, what was primarily used for monitoring. We've got the victim machine, what is going to be using PuTTY. PuTTY is going to be the Windows executable I'm going to inject and make malicious. Uh, we've got the Kali machine, so this is an attacker. So this is a guy listening for a connection to be associated. It's going to be using that technique by using Metasploit. And the other, the other uh, setup I've got on a machine I'm going to be using is another Windows machine, what I'm going to use Shouter on to inject the putty.exe and then I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the victim. So the, the brief steps I'm going to go on through to when we get onto the demo is I'm going to use Metasploit to start listening for connections on its IP address and 192.168.1.124 on the port 4444. Some of the commands once this connection has been established have been listed on this link here. This is what I've been using. Following that, I'm then going to download the legit, legit copy of putty.exe onto the creator machine. I'm then going to use Shouter to manipulate the legit putty.exe by injecting a module that calls back to the attacker using that information I just discussed. I'm then going to copy the manipulated putty.exe onto the victim machine. The AB will not detect this as malicious. I then run putty on the victim machine. So this will run as normal, no indicators of compromise, and no pop-up boxes to say that the putty.exe is faulty. This will allow full functionality of putty. We'll then see that the attacker machine has established a connection with the victim machine, and the attacker will have full control of the victim machine, so we start to keylog and download, etc. The final step of this is, of course, to analyze this in ECAN, to analyze its behavioral analytics, to see what we can see going on, what an antivirus wouldn't see. Let's dive into the demonstration. So you can see here I've got four virtual machines currently running. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Kali, the attacker. And I'm just going to ensure that Metasploit is running and we're actually listening for a connection or a callback. So 
I'm just starting the Metapoint Framework console here. So you can see we've started that and the exploit. I'm just going to put in the exploit command. Going to then set the payload that we're going to use. Reverse TCP technique. And then going to run it. Of course, sorry, I forgot to set the host here. So before we run it, we of course need to set the host. So we want to listen for a connection on our attacker's machine. So our IP address, and we know that it's this address here. And we want to set the port to listen to. I'm just going to confirm that we are currently configured for that address. Uh, so obviously, FO, yep, so that looks right, 192.168.1.124. So once I run this now, we should start our listener on this IP address. Yeah, and as you can see, our attacker is now listening for a TCP or a reverse TCP connection back to this machine. This will continue to listen until it establishes that connection. So we'll leave this running in the background for now. Next is where I'm going to use Shouter to inject a genuine copy of putty.exe. So I've downloaded Shouter and I've put it onto my machine here. So Shouter's booted up. It's got a quite an easy to use inline command prompt slash GUI. So we're just going to go into auto mode. We're not going to check for online version checks. We haven't got online connectivity. And then we want to target the executable we want to target to uh, inject. It's just giving a quick warning here that we can't back up the file putty.exe. I'm not too sure why. But you can see it's gone through thousands and thousands of instructions here and commands to start to inject this malicious code into putty or, or allow that callback. And in a minute, it's going to ask me for the callback IP address and port to use. So once that's injected, we're going to enable stealth mode. And we actually want to use a listed payload here. So we're going to put now the reverse TCP at the top. And it's going to ask for the victim's, or the attacker, sorry, to IP address to call back into. So we know it's 192.168.1.124. We have a port we're going to communicate back to is 4444. We're going to set that. And now Shouter is going to continue to inject into Putty. So now this malicious module has been injected into Putty. Putty hasn't really been altered too much. It, it, this file size will vary slightly, not by much, but it's just an additional module now that runs in the background of Putty. So it allows Putty to have its full functionality, but it also allows backdoor or callback to our attacking machine. So Putty is now being exploited. It is malicious. And it's still on our creator machine. So what we want to do next is drag and drop it onto the ECAT agent or the endpoint we're monitoring. Before doing that, I just want to show you the agent we are monitoring is online. So at near the bottom here is win OVO7 RAM I6 MO. You see he is online uh, and his current IFC score is 5 and he's got like a yellow status so it's not nothing major at the moment. You wouldn't but down this probably wouldn't bother analyzing or investigating further. So I'm going to go on to the uh, agent here. So this is what we're analyzing. And I'm literally just going to drag and drop this putty connection, or this putty executable, what is malicious. 
on sits on there. He's on there. I'm going to double click Putty. Um, for demo purposes, I'm not going to go into working with Putty, but you can see it's got full functionality still, and it's still working. So we've, we've kicked off this Putty. So let's see if the attacker picks this up. Open straight away, we can see there has been a payload sent back, payload handler. An attacker now has connectivity to our victim. It has full control. We start up shells, key dumps, uh, we start scanning stuff. Let's, for example, with key scan start. Uh, so we start to monitor for this We'll start to monitor keystrokes. Go back onto the attacker to prove it is working. We have got connections. Key scan dump. Yeah, you can see this is top secret notepad. It, it sometimes loses some of the keystrokes. Not 100% effective, but you can see we are starting to pull stuff down. You can download files. And so the reason it skipped this is because I've already actually downloaded it, but you can download files. So you can start shells. And so now we've got a Windows shell running. A kind of like command prompt, but we've got full full functionality of the machine. So let's now that we've proved this, that we've we've got control of the victim's machine, and we saw how easy it was. It was just literally using using shelter on our creator machine uh, to inject putty, putting putty onto an ECAT agent discuting putty, and now we have that access. We've got malware on the machine. Our antivirus doesn't pick it up. We even clan win the antivirus. I have also run uh, independent scans to verify that clan.win antivirus, the latest database version, does not pick this up. So the next step is really, is ECAT going to pick it up? So this is where we want to look into ECAP. We want to see what, what's happening, really. Has uh, ECAP picked up this new module, um, et cetera. So as you can see straight away, a little search icon has come onto our machine. This is because ECAP has detected a new module, putty.exe. It knows that it's kicked off, and it's actually requested a scan. So automatic scanning, triggering, once a new module is identified. So for now, as the scan runs, I'm going to briefly pause the demonstration. So it looks as if the scan has completed, and we can see here that when those the machine we were monitoring, what was previously at an IOC score of five, originally has boosted all the way up to 285. So now we want to deep dive into the machine and see what ECAT can see, what is relevant to the putty.exe being maliciously injected and having injected modules and callbacks, etc. I'm going to jump into this machine here. So we can see that there are certain DLLs floating, or in memory, or it shouldn't really be there. There is floating code running that will instantly give us high scores. Um, and at the moment, we can't see really what is associated with that. Uh, we can see Putty is running, but at the moment, it's not really got a much of a high score, but it's got network access. So what we really want to do to identify or tie this back down to Putty, we want to find out what is malicious. What is malicious executable? What, why is this code running? Is how the way I do it is I go into scan data, and this will start to give us a bit more context and further data into what's actually running. Uh, so what I can look at first of all is what live DLLs are running. Uh, so you can see then these are all the DLLs we saw with high IOC scores. And straight away, it looks as if it's its context, process context is putty.exe. So this is where we confirm really that putty.exe is creating these uh, modules in, in memory. These DLLs are malicious. We can check the, uh, we can check further on when we go into putty what it's communicating now to. Other things we can look into, what we map that to putty. Yes, there is a suspicious threading. So this goes back to our floating code. Uh, we can go into the network tab here and see putties pinging out to our attacker and port 4444. And again, you can see the 
almost high risk scores here. But this is where we really kind of look into putty. And we know now the analysts who are looking into this know that putty is res responsible. So we go back into the summary tab. So we can find putty on here. And we can see it a bit more, really, if it's on a, any other machines. Uh, the network it's communicating out to, and you can see it is pinging out 444444124 there. Uh, you could choose to blacklist putty, but again, putty is not is normally genuine and is not used for malicious purposes. Or you could just start to blacklist some of these DLLs it uses uh, and the floating code. And the way you do that is really you start to just blacklist in here, and you've got other options and so forth. But I'm not going to show you how to respond to that as such. This is more to demonstrate the value or the full visibility that ECAT allows. So even by using techniques to avoid antivirus detection, by scoping and injecting malicious modules will allow callbacks to attackers to give full functionality of user machine, ECAT can still see what's running in memory, this floating code, these DLLs, and map it back to the executable used to allow this connection in the first place. And this is where ECAT is very strong. It's got that visibility. And I'm hoping this demonstration showed you how easy it is to discover them vulnerabilities with ECAT. And that is all. I, think, I hope you find this useful, guys. And cheers for your time. Any questions, feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, name is Ben Oakley, based in the UK and Ireland. And I'll be working on some more demonstrations with uh, ECAT and injecting modules and malware and so forth. Thank you. Bye.